There's a ton of topics we could cover surrounding prorogation, so we asked our patrons to pick which topic we should cover first. The patrons voted and they chose this topic, so here we are. If you want to be involved in the videos we create in the future, then be sure to check out our Patreon. For only $5 a month, you can get the ability to vote on video topics, priority YouTube comments, behind the scenes posts, and early access to some of our videos. To find out more about that and all the other perks and tiers of membership, head over to patreon.com forward slash TLDR news. So as this is TLDR news, and because we constantly get flack for not being concise enough, let's start this video with a very short answer. No, prorogation probably can't be stopped at this point. Anyway, I'm sure you came for a little more analysis than just that, so let's get into the video. Johnson has just been given permission by the Queen to suspend, or if we're being technical, prorogue Parliament for five weeks between September and October. Although proroguing Parliament is common, and usually happens every year around this time, the controversy surrounds the reasons why Johnson has chosen to do it right now. Many people believe he's chosen to prorogue Parliament to prevent MPs from having the opportunity to stop a no-deal Brexit. Just so we don't keep repeating ourselves, if you want to know more detail about this, we encourage you to check out our other video we made on the topic. There's a link to it in the description. Anyway, this move has been incredibly controversial. Jeremy Corbyn has said that he'll try to stop it, and Lib Dem leader Joe Swinson has also come out to criticise the move. Other politicians from around the world have remarked that this seems like an undemocratic move, and a lot of people in the UK also seem upset about it, with protests taking place across the UK within hours, and approaching 1.6 million signatures on the official petition. So, given how controversial the move has been, it really begs the question, can it be stopped? Well, as the Queen's already granted it, that means that it's kind of too late for Parliament to do anything to stop prorogation. The Queen conventionally grants these requests to prorogue Parliament from her Prime Minister. As the UK's constitution is uncodified, not written all in one place, a lot of procedure relies on this kind of convention. The convention is that the monarch signs off pretty much everything the Prime Minister puts in front of them, so it was completely unsurprising that she granted this request. Because of how the UK's constitution works, Parliament currently doesn't, and never did, have a say in prorogation. However, as Alison Rourke at The Guardian pointed out, the Commons can make something known as a humble address, something that Dominic Grieve is already working on. A humble address is when the Commons make a direct call to the Queen, either to request documents from the government or to make their feelings known. This was used last November to ask for the publication of the government's impact assessment of the risks of a no-deal Brexit. Considering the number of MPs who don't like the idea of prorogation, including senior Conservatives such as Amber Rudd, Matt Hancock and Philip Hammond, it makes sense to write a humble address to the Queen. So, TLDR, Parliament can't cancel or vote against prorogation. The Queen has already signed it off, so there's nothing they can do to stop it now. Does this mean that Parliament has been completely declawed at this point? Can Parliament do anything? Well, now we get into the tricky business of votes of no confidence. A vote of no confidence is a way of bringing a government down. However, following the 2011 Fixed Term Parliament Act, this is now a touch more difficult. Prior to the passing of the Fixed Term Parliament Act, if a government lost a vote of no confidence, a general election would immediately be called. Now though, the government has 14 days to pass a vote of confidence. The Conservatives would likely use this time to try and negotiate with smaller parties, in order to create a new working majority. However, as the opposition parties have made clear over the last few weeks, they're also going to attempt to form their own government and pass their own motion of confidence in this time. When in power, they would try and seek an extension from the EU and use that extension time to call a general election. This would put the Queen in dangerous territory, because in this eventuality, Johnson would be under pressure to resign, but there's no requirement for him to do so, unless the Queen decides to dismiss him. This would mean the Queen acting politically, something that most people want to avoid. Obviously, all of this is hypothetical at this point, and none of these moves would actually prevent prorogation. It would, however, mean that the Commons could still seek an extension and block no deal, even with the prorogation roadblock in place. So, Parliament could still block no deal, and they could get round prorogation, but they can't stop prorogation. But what about anyone else? Can anyone stop prorogation? Well, there's some people who think they can. A number of lawsuits have already been issued, one citing the Scottish Claim of Right from 1689, 
and another citing the Good Friday Agreement of 1998. The reason this is going to court is best summed up by Gina Miller, a woman who has already beaten the government in court, and is trying to do so again. Nothing like this has ever been tested in court. As we said before, the UK's constitution is uncodified, and it's often down to the interpretation of old laws and convention to determine what's constitutional. As this hasn't been tested in court before, those taking it there hope that judges will have the same interpretation of the constitution as they do. However, as this article argues very well, it's highly unlikely that these legal challenges will succeed in court. The article explains that challenging the personal decision of the Queen in her own courts is not possible. However, it is possible to claim not against the monarch, but against the Prime Minister, on the basis that the latter's advice was unlawful. Doing so would be difficult due to timings, and due to the types of challenges that courts are likely to consider. Roughly speaking, the courts recognise three kinds of ground. That the decision was tainted by procedural improperty, that it was illegal, or that it was wholly unreasonable or irrational. Trying to go down the procedural route likely won't work. Imposing procedural requirements on Prime Ministers in this kind of case would be revolutionary and, in the minds of many judges, an unwelcome extension of legalistic rules in the political realm. So if that doesn't work, what about a legal challenge? Well, that does look more likely to succeed. As the article mentions, prorogation might violate the requirements of the Bills of Right 1689 that to redress all grievances and for the amending, strengthening and preserving of laws, parliaments ought to be held frequently. While this might sound like a promising avenue initially, the Act of 1694 specified that it was enough for parliaments to be held every three years. So a prorogation of a matter of weeks doesn't exactly look like it's going to contradict these rules. If you do want to know more about this, we highly recommend reading the whole article. There's a link to it down in the description, but it's safe to say that getting a legal challenge passed, especially with 62 days left, looks like a tough sell. So back to our list of potential candidates to defeat prorogation. It doesn't look likely that MPs will be able to do it, and a legal challenge also doesn't look likely. So is there anyone who can cancel prorogation? What about TLDR viewer favourite John Burko? We've discussed his plans to stop No Deal in previous videos, so could he be the solution to anti-No Dealer woes? For those of you who aren't familiar, John Burko is the current Speaker of the House of Commons, and that gives him a variety of powers within Parliament. If you want to learn more about him, there's a link to our video about him in the description below. But all you need to know now is that his position sets him up well to challenge threats to parliamentary powers. Unsurprisingly, Burko didn't take the prospect of Parliament being shut down well, and made a statement about it, despite currently being on a family holiday. Burko remarked that prorogation was a constitutional outrage, and that the shutting down of Parliament would be an offence against the democratic process and the rights of parliamentarians as the people's elected representatives. This kind of reaction is unusual for the Speaker, and Jacob Rees-Mogg struck back, saying that Mr Speaker's interesting, because the Speaker by convention and long-standing tradition has no tongue with which to speak or eyes with which to see other than is directed by the House. It was the most constitutionally improper thing that happened yesterday, but Burko has become somewhat famous for either defending the will of MPs or trying to prevent no deal, depending on how you look at it. Burko knows that he won't hold his position for much longer. He's been enrolled since 2009 and gone past his initial promise of staying in position for two parliaments. He's also deeply unpopular with his own party, so he knows that he doesn't have long left. That means that this could be the moment for him to take a stand and create a legacy. Burko could change parliamentary procedure, allowing for MPs to seek an extension to Article 50 by using Standing Order 24 procedure, which allows for emergency debates. With Burgo so determined to let MPs' voices be heard, he might use his powers to force the government to listen, fitting emergency dates in the limited time that MPs have left. Some, including Bobby Friedman, Burko's biographer, have even suggested that Burko could ignore the prorogation and lead a parliament in exile. He can play his final hand as Speaker, opening the doors of the Commons in the face of prorogation, running his own chamber as an act of defiance against the government. This would be completely constitutionally insane and an unheard of move, but Burko could try and land one final blow against Johnson and twist the constitutional conventions back in his favour. With so little left to lose and with enough determination, Burko could help MPs work around prorogation, but ultimately would struggle to prevent it, at least without some really extreme actions. 
So that leaves MPs, legal battles, and the Speaker all essentially ruled out. We think that there's very little chance that prorogation could be overturned, but we'd love to know what you think on it. Do you think there's any other way that prorogation could be stopped? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to be updated on all of this and news more generally. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. If you want more from us, you can find us across other social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. And if you want your name featured at the end of the videos, just like these people, then check out our Patreon.